Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I've got a ton of things to cover, to where there's basically no way I could have done it all in a normal video, but I will be going through everything as fast as I can, starting with terrible news, AMD's AM5 platform, Nvidia could lose it all, Intel's GPUs are seriously impressive, Intel's 12th gen gets officially unveiled, and Intel is now copying AMD. And of course, we're getting close to that time of year where we start seeing a ton of releases, so if you enjoy getting the most up-to-date hardware news, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have a report from Seeking Alpha on NVIDIA's Q2 earnings call. And in it, the CEO Jensen Huang said, quote, Meanwhile, we're having and are securing pretty significant long-term supply commitments as we expand into all of these different marketing initiatives that we're setting ourselves up for. And so I would expect that we will see a supply-constrained environment for the vast majority of next year is my guess at the moment. So he basically says, okay, we're doing a ton of things to try and get supply up to where it needs to be. And with that, I've got great news. Uh, you're not going to see supply all of next year. Um, okay. Seems like an odd way to kind of phrase that, but there you have it, at least according to NVIDIA, who before this said that we would see better supply far before that, now thinks that supply is going to be constrained for most of next year. And of course, if you're having a tough time buying a new GPU, make sure to pick up the new GamerMeld Paper Launch t-shirt at store.gamermeld.com. You can see we have the GPU that is clearly nothing but paper. And next up for today, we actually have a story that comes from that Gigabyte ransomware attack I recently discussed. And I will say I'm not going to be including a link to any of those leaked documents or anything like that, just because these were stolen from Gigabyte and they're even trying to get money out of it, making this a ransomware attack. So I really didn't want to discuss too many stories out from this, but this particular one is already effectively all over the place and we already had leaks on this. Any Anyway, when we look, we can see that this is a leaked diagram of the AM5 chipset and socket AM5. Remember, currently we're in AM4, it's been used for all of AMD's Zen processors, and this is going to be the first time we move into something new for next-gen CPUs. And first up, you can see that it actually includes dual-channel DDR5, and that's obviously going to be great just because we know that AMD's Infinity Fabric is very much tied to memory, and we're already seeing some pretty massive speeds for DDR5. Now, with that said, somewhat unfortunately, it does look like earlier rumors, just like they suggested, AMD is not moving to PCI Express Gen 5. Now, Intel is, but I'll get to that in just a second, but currently for at least their next gen CPUs, this only supports PCI Express Gen 4. And next up for today, we have a pretty wild story. If you've been following the channel, you know that NVIDIA actually acquired ARM for billions of dollars. And with that, a lot of people were extremely upset, understandably, just because ARM licenses their technology out to tons of other companies. And NVIDIA, obviously being someone who would like to decrease competition, could eventually stop, even though they're promising that they won't. But like I said, they could eventually stop licensing the technology, making it where you have to buy the technology with NVIDIA. Well, it looks like there is actually a pretty major roadblock that could be happening from the UK. As you can see right here, it says the UK's Competition and Market Authority today announced an in-depth Phaser 2 probe of NVIDIA's planned purchase of ARM. As you can see right here, it says, quote, We are concerned that NVIDIA controlling ARM could create real problems for NVIDIA's rivals by limiting their access to key technologies and ultimately stifling innovation across a number of important and growing markets. Basically, they are having these concerns that it could really hamper other businesses, especially ones that currently use ARM technology, which is a lot. Now, with that said, this isn't an absolute stop to it. This is just the UK wanting to look into things 
much further, which does seem to suggest that they found something they don't like. I mean, obviously they do mention it right here, but it doesn't mean NVIDIA is definitely done, the deal is over, anything like that, but it's absolutely a pretty big roadblock. NVIDIA actually stated just recently that the acquisition of ARM was going to take longer than they originally expected, and this is likely at least one of the reasons why. And with all of that said, it's finally time to get into Intel's Architecture Day 2021. For those who don't know, Intel's Architecture Day is where they go over upcoming GPUs, in this case GPUs and CPUs, and we typically get some new information on upcoming products and some pretty sweet slides. This time they gave us a ton of new information, so I'm going to try and kind of compact in some of the most important stuff that I'm going to be going over today. Starting things off, we have their upcoming GPUs, specifically their HPG Gaming Discrete GPUs. So this is the stuff obviously gamers are going to be really interested in. We're talking about discrete gaming GPUs for desktop. And you can see right here that they go over something that I have already discussed, which is their naming scheme being ARC. First generation coming in Q1 2022 is codenamed Alchemist. After that, it's going to be Battle Mage, then Celestial, then Druid. But of course, we already knew most of that. Don't worry, there's a ton of new stuff starting with XE Core, which is really interesting because it actually completely renames what Intel used to call their cores, which were called EUs or execution units. Things have gotten significantly more complicated, so they effectively renamed it XE Core. And you can see right here that each XE Core comes with 16 vector engines, and these vector engines are essentially what they used to call their EUs. Then they have their matrix engines, which are essentially like NVIDIA's Tensor Cores. That's right, gaming GPUs are going to be coming with Tensor Cores, and we'll get to why in just a second. Then, after the XE Core, things get a little bit more complex, where you have a Render Slice. So, a Render Slice is effectively made of four XE Cores. And if we look at the traditional EUs, or Vector Cores, you have 16 per XE Core, then a render slice has four, that makes 64. Moving on from here, they can have up to eight render slices per GPU. And guess what that makes? 512 EUs, which, if you've been following the channel, pretty much all leaks have suggested that 512 EUs was going to be the maximum we'd see from their XE HPG architecture. So that means over five times what you currently have in their XE LP GPU. So, a pretty big jump, but it actually gets even better. Not only does it have over 5 times the cores, it also has 1.5 times the frequency, which means it'll likely be around 2, 2.1 gigahertz, as well as 1.5 times the performance per watt. So, XE HPG is looking like a very serious contender, even against AMD and NVIDIA's newest GPUs. Obviously, we can't 100% say what kind of performance we can expect, but given the performance of XE, CLP. With all of this information, it is looking pretty good. And moving on, remember that I actually said that Intel's GPUs have dedicated tensor cores, and this right here looks to be why. XESS or XE Super Sampling. This is Intel's answer to NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR. And it's really interesting. For one, you can see right here that it looks like this is talking about neural networks. Well, it is because they do use a neural network, which makes XESS much closer to NVIDIA's DLSS than, say, AMD's FSR. And when it comes to actually how this looks, you can see right here that it gets up to two times the FPS and... Intel actually shared a video of this, but here's a pretty interesting screenshot from that. We can see 4K native 1080p, obviously a fairly massive difference, and this is at two times magnification, but when we look at the XESS 4K, we can see that it's significantly better than 1080p, but it isn't right up to snuff with 4K native, though it is fairly close. And moving on, we now get to go to Alder Lake. Remember that Alder Lake is Intel's next generation of CPUs that should be coming out later this year. It's going to be a new core design built on 10 nanometer Superfin, actually their improved 10 nanometer Superfin, and it's going to have 
big dot little cores, meaning it's going to have powerful cores that are set to handle some of the most powerful tasks, but also efficient cores that are made to handle more or less background tasks. And you can see right here, they have the P core and the E core. Now, what's really interesting about what they give us today, so this is their efficient x86 core. Um, oh, really quickly before I get to that, they also announced a thread directory, which is the first hardware solution that actually lets you see whether each thread is either a P core thread or an E core thread, meaning the operating system will be able to determine which thread needs to do what. And this is going to be coming with Windows 11. Unfortunately, I haven't heard anything about Windows 10. So if you do plan on getting Alder Lake, at least for now, make sure you're going to be getting Windows 11 as well. And moving on really quickly, also a little bit more about Alder Lake. We have desktop, mobile, ultra mobile. So Alder Lake is going to be releasing across all platforms. This is the first time we've seen this for quite a while now, just because Intel has had such a tough time getting major processors off of 14 nanometers. And moving on, the leaks were correct. As you can see here, it gets up to 16 cores, eight performance cores, eight efficient cores, which means up to 24 threads just because the performance cores get uh, multi-threading while their efficient cores do not. And moving on, when it comes to performance of Alder Lake, you can see that versus 11th gen gets a 19% IPC improvement, which if they're able to keep the frequency anywhere near where it is right now, it will definitely be a powerful CPU. But that really isn't the interesting part. Next, we can see basically why a little while back we saw a performance that showed the 12,900K actually beating AMD's 16 cores in three. Remember, the 12,900K is set to go against the 5900X, not the 5950X. So it was really surprising, and this looks to be why. You can see right here that their new efficient core can actually get over 40% more performance compared to a single Skylake core at the same ISO power or at the same performance, it takes up 40% less power. So while these are efficiency cores, they're also very powerful cores, seriously impressive, so it definitely makes sense why this 16 core CPU could actually challenge a full 16 core AMD Ryzen CPU. And next up, really quickly, it does support PCI Express Gen 5. Once again, that's what kind of ties back into the earlier story, why it's at least a little bit disappointing, although I really don't see that many people using it, but it's still slightly disappointing to see AMD still on PCI Express Gen 4 while Intel is moving to Gen 5. And lastly for today, I do have to poke fun at Intel for this, just because if you remember not long ago, they handily made fun of AMD, calling their CPUs effectively glued together just because they were an MCM design, meaning instead of a monolithic die, it's multiple dies put together using an interconnect. Well, Intel's doing it now too. You can see Ice Lake single monolithic die, their upcoming Sapphire Rapids uses a multi-tile design, but tiles are really just what they call their modules effectively. Either way, this is multiple modules connected using an interconnect. Sound familiar? All right, while that does it for today, I know I rambled a ton in this video, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. Hopefully you did understand all of it. It's pretty interesting. I'm really excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs and their next gen CPUs. But of course, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.